And welcome to another Elements.Cloud customer briefing. My name is Brooke Monkern. I am a senior customer success manager here at Elements.Cloud, and I am joined by my esteemed colleague, Rick Rosler, senior technical product manager. Today's topic, one of my absolute all-time personal favorites is Salesforce permissions. And uh, today we're about to show you the Elements.Cloud Permissions Explorer, which is a suite of tools released to the platform for managing the complexity of permissions related work inside of Salesforce. The purpose of this product is to help people manage the complexities of not only daily tasks of dealing with the complexities of permissions, permission sets, who has access to what, but also to help uh, stabilize and even plan for a better future. Uh, I'd like to talk about the history of permissions just briefly uh, and say that uh, Salesforce has been uh, diligent in evolving uh, the, the capabilities admins have for uh, administering permissions inside of Salesforce. Uh, permission sets, permission set groups, muting, uh, enhancements to the UI, all under Cheryl Feldman's uh, leadership. Salesforce is coming up with some exceptional uh, capabilities around that. And we're here to uh, help further that cause. Um, we're going to assume today that there is a baseline understanding in the group of users that we have here uh, as to how to administer, you know, administer profiles and permission sets. Uh, but if you need further uh, history, a uh, little background, uh, look at Cheryl's blog, which is uh, set up as a QR code in the upper right-hand corner of this slide uh, for some terrific background. But also there's a, uh, a wonderful, uh, uh, Luis Locke uh, video called Build a Permission Set Led Security Model, uh, which gives a terrific uh, perspective as well. In this webinar, we're going to show you the tools that you can use today. They're released today to help simplify the management of your day-to-day -day existing system complexity, uh, but also look at some of the ways the tools can be used to help you implement a path to a better and more manageable future. Uh, so as Brooke said, uh, Permissions Explorer <clears throat> is a suite of, uh, of three tools. Uh, the first one is the, the new Access Analyzer, which answers uh, questions like who has access to what and why. Uh, permissions uh, Comparison Tool, uh, which has actually been out for almost a year now, uh, but which is kind of a critical component um, that you could use in this migration from, uh, from whatever you have today uh, to this future state of uh, permission set and permission set group-led uh, security. Uh, and finally, we're introducing new compliance reports uh, that uh, quickly tell you uh, everyone who has access to uh, dangerous permissions uh, or sensitive data. Uh, the uh, webinar is going to be divided into three segments, uh, one for each of these capabilities. Uh, during each segment, so, uh, so there's Q&A uh, as part of the webinar, so if you have questions, post them to the Q&A. Um, uh, during each segment, if there are questions like that are specific to Access Analyzer, we'll try to cover those questions right then. Otherwise, if they're more general questions, we'll wait uh, until the end to address them. Uh, and then a final note um, on, on uh, language. So anytime you see the word permissions with a lowercase p, it will generally mean profiles, permission sets, and permission set groups, right? So, so all of those things or any combination of those things. Um, anytime you see the word access, uh, it means the level of access that's granted by a permission. So read, edit, uh, visible, enabled, things like that, that you would, uh, that you would see in a permission set. So uh, with that, let's, um, let's dive into uh, the access analyzer. Uh, so there are uh, many different metadata types that uh, whose access can be controlled uh, by permission sets. Uh, access analyzer supports 16 of those. Uh, uh, objects, fields, flows, classes, and so forth. Um, if I pick um, everybody's favorite field, uh, the opportunity stage name field, and I look uh, in Access Analyzer, um, I will be able to see uh, all of the permissions, that's profiles, 
permission sets and permission set groups uh, that grant access to uh, the stage field. Uh, the number of users that are assigned to each of those permissions uh, and the level of access that's granted by that permission. I can further see all of the users that have access to the stage name field, um, all of the permissions that are granting that specific user access and the aggregate level of access uh, that's granted by you know, the, com the combination of all of those permissions for that user. And finally, I can drill down into a specific user and I can see individually all of the permissions uh, that that user is granted access to the stage field, um, as well as the individual uh, levels of access that are granted by each permission. So, Brooke, uh, when, when you, you think about uh, what we just saw, back in your days as a platform owner, how would you have handled questions like this? Uh, <laughs> Humorously, I'd say, oh, sorry, uh, question time is over, and I would have just written and hidden my uh, office to try to avoid having to do it. But um, in, in all honesty, it was really uh, something of a, 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 a an archaeological dig, right? Uh, we all tend to work in um, mature orgs. Uh, permissioning has evolved over time uh, so that uh, most orgs have a combination of different approaches to dealing with uh, security, be it the profile, the permission set, the permission set group, uh, you know, uh, and I would have to effectively uh, try to run a forensic analysis of understanding what the, the problem that was being experienced was, the question that was being asked, and then work backwards. Uh, but mostly it was it was uh, manual clicking. I'd have to go through lists of information, uh, searching out the needle in the haystack. Um, you know, were I better at, uh, uh, you know, writing queries, uh, more recently I could have uh, uh, queried you know, using Workbench, uh, extracted information and normalized it, but uh, I wasn't particularly good at that. So uh, uh, it's not easy, Rick. It was not easy. I... Right. So, uh, so Access Analyzer uh, is designed to, uh, to, to address scenarios like these, which, which we've probably all had uh, uh, in our previous lives or as admins or current, current lives as admins. Um, so you have employees that, uh, that are in, uh, in the same role, um, but they seem to have different levels of access um, uh, to something that they, that they should both have the same level of access to. So the question is, why are they different? Uh, you have an employee who has access to something that they should not have access to. Uh, so how did that happen? Uh, and finally, uh, there are typically uh, audits that go on, uh, reports that need to be generated on uh, who has access to a particular, uh, particular set of, of objects, in this case, um, objects that have to do with uh, revenue recognition. So, uh, so I'm going to do a short demo of Access Analyzer, and we're going to focus on uh, the scenario number two uh, about our employee, Sam, uh, who was able to make a change to the candidate object, uh, which surprisingly he should not have any access to at all. So, uh, so here I'm in the metadata dictionary on the candidate. Um, I can click on the, uh, the Access tab. Uh, and because I care right now about finding out whether um, uh, uh, or, or how Sam right is getting access to this, uh, I'm going to go straight to uh, analyze user access, which is going to open up this window. And I care about Sam, so I'm going to filter on Sam. And here's Sam, and in, indeed he has read and edit access to this object via hmm the case edit permission set. So that's <laughs> puzzling because case edit seems like it shouldn't have anything to do with, uh, with an HR object. Um, so, uh, so, so, now, so now we kind of have gotten to uh, kind of the proximate cause of, um, of, of why this has occurred. Um, so, so Brooke, so again, kind of in your, in your past, uh, uh, role as platform owner, can you kind of walk through how long it would have taken you to get to this point in your analysis, which to, I think took us like 15 seconds? 
uh, it would have taken a lot longer than that. So I would have navigated to the, uh, the, the user object and looked at the profile permissions as well as the permission sets granted, uh, hoping that there would be some indication of where the problem might uh, lie. Typically, as in this case, uh, there's no clear evidence that there should be candidate access. So I would need to look at the profile and drill down through each one of the menu options looking for, in this case, uh, object access permissions. So at least I have a, a target to go after. <clears throat> but I would have to go through and ensure that uh, you know the 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 each one of the permissions and profiles was was evaluated. But the challenge with this, though, uh, Rick, and <laughs> this is why it's my <laughs> favorites, is that the confidence that I gain in being able to not only look at and find the one thing. Uh, that, that's missing is, but I stand a chance of actually finding uh, other things as well, all in the same amount of time I'm investigating the one problem. Yeah, so so, so that's an excellent point. Um, so so an obvious question that that one might ask is, okay, so we know that 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 Sam is over permissioned here. Um, is anybody else? So uh, so here we can quickly let's remove the Sam filter, um, and since we know that the case edit permission set is um, the culprit is that the culprit right so uh, so now we can see all of the users that have case edit and it looks like uh there, there's three other people but but they also have the hr permission set which is correct so it looks like nobody else is over permissioned um uh and and it seems to just just be a um uh, a sam problem so 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 again so this was this was pretty snappy to get to this point I, it's it's uh, it, it's it's unprecedented. Um, and not only that, but the information's actionable. I see you have an export to CSV button. Right. Uh, and, you know, it's um, it's uh, explorable. I, I just um, um, well, I can't overstress. And probably, if I could see people's faces, uh, I hope to see a lot of nodding heads about uh, how fast and easy uh, that kind of analysis uh, could could be. Uh, and, and it's just huge. I, I can't overstate how important this is. So in the access tab, I, I skipped over this part, but you can see for the candidate object here, um, all of the profiles, permission sets, and permission set groups um, that are granting access and how many um, users are assigned to each and what le the level of access is. Um, um, here's a, a test permission set group with no users that may need some investigation. So I've, right. I've done the deep dive, right? Needle in the haystack. I took a step back to see how big the problem might be, right? And <clears throat> I'm now confident in the fact that I've cast a, a, a very large net to ensure that there aren't any other anomalies occurring uh, that, that I might want to address in this same vein. Right. So, so now we're in the case edit setup uh, page, click on the optimize tab. Uh, and if I go to analyze access, um, this is where, this is a view where you can see all of the different, um, uh, categories, uh, of, of metadata that are, that are assignable uh, to a permission set. Um, and so, you, so this view gives you, right, there's 40 fields that are assigned. There's two objects, there's two record types and so forth. If I, uh, click on one of these, Right. I can see that uh, case edit is is indeed assigning the read and edit permissions to the candidate object, as well as to uh, the, these permissions that it should be doing uh, for case. So, um, so again, this, it it feels like it's a mistake. Uh, it probably re, uh, requires some uh, further investigation. Maybe, maybe it's there for some good reason that that nobody documented. Uh, when would that ever happen? Um, so, uh, so this is. Um, this is just a quick, a quick um, overview so, so of the of the analyze access. So, uh, so Brooke, do you have do you have anything to add to that? I do. Well, I want to I want to emphasize again that the investigative investig the investigation you lead into the system will bring you into a number of different areas, all of which can be served by the tooling, right? To give you answers to the questions that you have. Uh, why is it granting access? Who else has access as a result? Why isn't it documented? Should I document it, right? By talking to the stakeholders and bringing, you know, the 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 information that you need to have an informed conversation <clears throat> to the root, 
it may very well be, as you said, the case access is granted because uh, and nobody has bothered to document it. So it actually, as a next step, could be not changing the permission back, but making notes so that someone else who encounters the same situation, the same question, actually has the benefit of the work that you've uncovered here. And it's reusable across uh, the enterprise for anybody who who is is uh, you know landing on this particular uh, situation again. Right. All right. So let's talk about um, let's talk about permissions comparison now, which is the second element. Um, so so we've just seen uh, this first uh, feature, which is the ability to uh, to drill into a specific profile permission set or permission set group. Um, and see all of the flows, fields, objects, and so forth uh, that are being granted uh, access and, and the level of access that are being granted. Um, uh, a feature that has also been out for, uh, for the last year or so uh, is, is this org-wide uh, similarity score report. So uh, regardless of the number of uh, profiles and permission sets you have in your org, uh, we can run this report, it may take a few hours to run, depending on the size of your org, um, but it will tell you for every pair of profiles and permission sets uh, how similar they are, right, on a score of zero to 100, where zero means there, there's no overlap whatsoever, and 100 means they're exactly the same. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes. Um, this provides a, a good roadmap for getting started on this journey of moving to this permission set led and permission set group led security model where you want to end up with like skinny profiles right that basically just have defaults on them um, and everything else moved into permission sets and permission set groups a big task right so where do you start this can help you start uh, and finally uh, once you've identified a number of profiles and permission sets uh, I'm sorry, profiles or permission sets that you want to consolidate. Um, we also provide uh, reporting that gives you uh, a, a much more detail on exactly how like two profiles are different to allow you to start doing that consolidation project. And I, I'll show you that uh, as well. And I'm going to start by going back to the org model, uh, you'll find the, um, the profile and permission set similarity score report um, up here uh, in the, this top toolbar. Uh, uh, when you click on it, uh, it'll, it'll say it's running. And, and again, this is the one that's, that's going to do many uh, comparisons. Um, in this particular org, we have about 25 profiles and 75 permission sets. So there's, a, there's about 100 things overall. Um, 100 times 100 is 10,000, and half of that is 5,000. So, uh, so in doing this comparison, it's, it's basically doing 5,000 um, uh, calculations, right, to see how similar these things are. You're not going to um, ask me uh, uh, how I would do that in the old days, are you? Because the answer hmm. would be I wouldn't. <laughs> so, so this is... This is the result. Uh, it creates a CSV. I've imported that CSV into Excel. Um, uh, I've, I've grouped things and color-coded things, right? So every, every pink cell in the spreadsheet, um, uh, and again, it's, it's 100 profiles and permission sets across. It's 100 profiles and permission sets down. And, and wherever one of those uh, crosses, it, it tells you the percentage similarity of that profile to that or the, the, the permission in the column against the permission uh, in the row. So I'd like um, to just ask a quick clarifying question. Uh, sure. Hours long report, um, the, the typical generation time for this report, having clicked on the button, uh, you know, there's processing going on in the background, but um, I would say that, you know, the typical export for, you know, a, 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 an org that's not, massively complicated is 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 actually pretty quick in my experience to your point though mathematically speaking the number of permutations uh not you know just the least of which is is percentage overlap but the investigation that's going into each one of them and the normalization of the information is a pretty right. extraordinary amount of work 
Right. So, so if we if we go back now and talk about uh, kind of the scenario, right? So now now we're talking about um, the the evolution from whatever you have, right, to to this more manageable future state. Typically, the one of the first steps uh, in that process, to, it, again, is to try to skinny down your profiles, and so you, you'll want to find profiles that are uh, that are similar, uh, and 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 start a consolidation project uh, with those. And and this tool can help provide a roadmap for for kind of where to start. And the, the great thing about um, th this journey is, is that you don't have to do everything at once, right? It, it can be done in pieces. You do some consolidation, um, you, you create some new permission sets, you assign, you, you test them, um, uh, assign them, make sure nothing's broken, right? And then you can go to the next step. So, uh, so if I were approaching this, right, I'd be looking at, um, at my custom profiles, right? The things that I can control, um, and trying to understand uh, what are candidates for consolidation. So, uh, so I've actually I created a tab and 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 now just looking at um, at these eight uh, custom profiles, uh, which in this org are are already kind of al aligned by persona or or role, uh, which makes the job a little bit easier. Um, and so, if I look at this, I can see that uh, that the the account manager profile. Um, is very similar uh, to these other five um, uh, profiles, read-only, product, HR, finance, and marketing. Um, not, not, so, uh, not so much overlap with customer success. So, uh, so in, the, in the next step, I'm going to look at, uh, at these six profiles, account manager plus these five. And to do that, I'm going to go back so I'm back in uh, my metadata dictionary, and now I'm in the uh, I'm I'm on the account manager profile. And if I go to my uh, my optimize uh, tab, I'm going to click analyze access, and you can see uh, this is the view that uh, we saw before when we looked at case edit. So I can drill down and and understand what's going on in account manager if I wanted to, uh, but there's a compare button, and so. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give this, um, I'm going to give this some name, uh, and I'm doing this for the webinar and I'm going to continue. And this is where I'm going to select what I want to compare. So I want to compare profiles. So I'm going to filter here and I want to compare finance. I, so I'm comparing the account manager profile against the ones that I'm, uh, selecting. So there's finance. So you're using uh, your uh, as as your as your guide, and now you're coming in and, and implementing. Yes. Practice. Yeah. Yeah. So so again, I so I used I used the big org wide report as my roadmap, right? And then I, I I looked at those clusters of similar profiles and said, okay, these six look like they're candidates for consolidation. So now I'm going to go in to this tool, right? And I'm going to and I'm going to uh, generate now reports. Um, that show me at, at an excruciating detail level exactly how these six profiles are, are different. No, we are admins. We do like excruciating detail. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Uh, so I think that's six, one, two, three, four, five on the other page. So that's that. I'm going to click compare. Uh, and so now it's, uh, now it's doing the comparison. Um, and it generally takes... Uh, ah, I was going to say a few seconds and it's done. So now that it's done, I can click on that and open it. And now we, uh, we have a heat map uh, that, uh, that shows each of these uh, five profiles that are selected uh, and, uh, and how similar they are to the account manager profile. So this is the, the total uh, kind of aggregate similarity. Uh, which uh, uh, which uh, you you we would have seen on the previous spreadsheet, uh, and then category by category, um, it tells you uh, a similarity score uh, and the uh, uh, and the number of differences that there are uh, out of out of the total. So so there's a lot of data here that you can go and explore and play with. Um, again, uh, everything that we're showing you is available in, if you're an Elements customer, is available uh, 
uh, in your product today. Um, as a former admin, I think the way I would approach this is by starting with objects, right? Because I kind of understand my data model. I, I work with all of the different uh, the different roles. I kind of know what they do. I know what they have. I know I, I know kind of how they do their jobs and what data they need access to. And so uh, so for me, objects would be a good place to start. And it's uh, one of the highest you know uh, uh, risk areas of the system. And right. it really is the the IP that you're trying to protect. So right. These privilege access start with the things you're trying to protect most objects and fields. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, it lays it out quite nicely. Right. And so, so now I'm, uh, I'm looking at specifically at objects, right? And so, uh, again, these are comparisons with, uh, with account manager. So, uh, so here's all the different profiles I have. Uh, here's all of the objects that these different profiles are granting access to. Uh, you can see here's the account manager. So I can see all of the, uh, all of the differences between these here. Obviously, I, I, I probably export this to CSV and, and do some more analysis. But but just seeing, and you can you you can see there is there is a lot uh, a lot of data here, and, the, and this is probably no different than an org that you might be working with, um, uh, just because of the way the, the history of of profiles. Right. Um, so so Brooke. How would how would you start to make sense of data like this if your objective was to to move to a permission set led security model? <laughs> Trigger warnings, right? <laughs> <It's> like, <hey. laughs> uh, the fact is, I, I think the easiest way that I uh, have found is to try to organize, learn how to speak, organize my thoughts around. Uh, the reasons we invest in Salesforce, the jobs that people are are hired to do in Salesforce by department or something like that. So a capability map is something that comes to mind. Uh, what we're looking at in this case is uh, is uh, market based uh, jobs to be done. The marketing department does uh, specific types of work. We break out the specific types of work into business processes. You might be familiar with UPN diagramming. Uh, you might just have a, a, a Word document that describes the jobs, but if we can normalize them into a, a, a pictorial form that everybody can appreciate, especially within the departments, I run marketing campaigns, I manage opportunities, I book opportunities uh, in the different roles, then as an admin, we stand a chance of actually ensuring that we can configure the system in a way that really helps them solve uh, uh, well, not solve, but it, aid them uh, in doing their jobs. W what's really nice about it, though, is it also makes it easy for us to understand what they don't need, right? So the sum total of all the jobs to be done and the permissions needed in order to uh, perform those jobs uh, is, is quite quantifiable, which means that anything that doesn't get called out uh, is likely a candidate for removal, giving us the, the, the map we need to get to the least privileged <laughs> access. And I guess you could only imagine how effective that would be when it comes to onboarding and offboarding and promoting uh, or having folks change jobs within the organization. I don't know how many hours uh, I have spent trying to tune a user uh, to the new role they're in uh, without having a, a, a map as to what the role entails and what they need to do. Um, you know, it's 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 a it's a it's it's a lot of work to be able to manage this without you know, maps like this. So this is right. one of my favorite views. Yeah. And and just a, as a note, um, again, if you're an Elements customer, um, this this kind of uh, uh, draft or, or prototype uh, capability map was created uh, using the architecture diagramming uh, tool uh, in Elements, which if you're doing it in Elements, again, documentation. Uh, so now you have uh, a documented view of all the roles or jobs to be done. And if you want, you can, uh, uh, you can add uh, information, metadata uh, to these different blocks um, that will align with, with your new permission set, um, uh, your new uh, task-based permission sets. The kind of the, the, the journey to get from wherever you are to the, this future state 
um, is is really a, a two parallel paths. Um, and and we spent a few minutes talking about this because having this uh, uh, capability or task based view of roles is really important um, understanding so that you can effectively design your task based permission sets and then group those right in, in into persona based permission set groups, which is what you what you want to be the core uh, for the assignment um, in the new world to kind of replace you know the 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 the, the big beefy profiles that you probably have now. And this is all in keeping with the Salesforce guidance on you know uh, where tooling within Salesforce is going. So right, getting on board with what's going to be a, an extremely bright future in in uh, the the, the few, uh, <clears throat> releases that Salesforce is doing to support uh, a more sustainable uh, access future. So right. All right. So so that's basically everything that uh, we have to talk about for the permissions comparison and, and this kind of transformation uh, type of project. Um, I'm going to quickly close uh, with compliance reporting. Um, we have two new reports in elements, uh, one for users with dangerous permissions, uh, which tells you uh, for 33 different user permissions, all of the users that have access to that uh, or that are enabled for that permission um, and the permissions that are granting that. We also have a users with access to sensitive data report, um, which covers uh, fields that have sensitive data where we're defining sensitive to be uh, um, one or more of three uh, characteristics. It's either an encrypted field or the, uh, the data sensitivity uh, uh, property or the compliance categorization property of the field ha has been set to something, right? So confidential, PII, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So if one of the, those three um, uh, things are true, then, uh, then we say, ah, this, is, this field is sensitive uh, and it's going to show up in this report. Uh, so we'll, we'll have the field, the users that have access to that field, the level of access, whether it's read or read and edit, as well as the permissions that are granting that. Um, very useful for audit, especially if you want to track changes to this across audit periods. Um, we've seen this um, uh, in a number of customers, that, that this, this kind of request. Um, so, so hopefully this will address that. Um, yeah, and... Uh, and, and these are these are the typical scenarios. You know, uh, the the general counsel needs a report by end of day. When when has that ever happened? Um, on every access that has um, uh, every user that has access to personal data um, on a patient object. Uh, you know, hmm, data breach. You know, who they never tell you why or what happened, right? But they need the the data by the end of the day. Um, uh, Scenario two, basically the same, but now you need to know what's changed, uh, right? So if you have these reports uh, snapshotted across audit uh, periods, you can do that. Um, and then uh, and then a, kind of a typical request um, from SOX is they want to see uh, users that have uh, access like to modify all data and, and some, some of these other typical, typically dangerous permissions. Um, they may want documentation on why those users have uh, access to that uh, permission uh, and so forth, which you know you you could do with other pieces of uh, of elements. So the reports are here. Uh, they're at the very bottom of your list: users with access to sensitive data and users with uh, with the dangerous permissions. Um, in this org. Uh, uh, th these reports only take uh, a few minutes uh, to run. I've actually already uh, run them and have them queued up uh, here for you. So this is the uh, users with dangerous permissions uh, report. If you're, uh, again, you, you see uh, the user, the link will take you to their Salesforce setup record, uh, the, uh, the name of the, uh, the user permission, um, the permission set uh, that's giving uh, access. If you're not that familiar with elements reporting, uh, you can do things like uh, you can filter. So 
So like dangerous permissions, we know that um, uh, we know that admins have basically everything. So uh, so depending on what we're doing, we we may want to filter out um, all of the admin related things because it's not that interesting. Um, you can uh, you can group uh, you can group things. Um, permission, API name, so we can do things like this, right? So you can um, get, get this into a little more readable form. Um, obviously everything, again, is exportable to Excel. If you need to snapshot this uh, for record keeping, uh, or if you just need to do uh, more analysis. Um, the users with access to sensitive data report um, very similar. Uh, users, uh, the object and field uh, that has the sensitive data, um, uh, the, the reason why it's sensitive, right? It's either uh, compliance uh, data sensitivity, in this case, it's both of those, um, or encrypted, uh, these are not encrypted, um, and the profile or permission set uh, that's, giving, uh, that's giving access to that, as well as the level of access. So, um, if you have fields and you're particularly interested uh, in everybody that um, uh, that has edit access to a field, for example, you can filter, you know, just for edit. Um, that kind of completes all of the little demo parts. Um, I did want to mention a, a few weeks ago uh, we had uh, an Elements GPT webinar. Um, uh, obviously, one of the, the newer uh, features of GPT um, is the ability to consume CSVs. And so one of the things that we're working on uh, at Elements, uh, be, because we have all this data, right, and it's obviously all exportable to CSV, um, is, uh, is enhancing uh, the Elements GPT capability um, to actually interact with the permissions data that, that we have in the system so that you can do natural language queries uh, against your permissions data. Um, so that should be pretty exciting. Uh, I, I don't have a time frame for when uh, that may be available. Um, we're also uh, incrementally making you know, improvements across all three of these uh, pieces of, um, of the Permissions Explorer product. Uh, would just so everybody knows, despite the fact that we've taken away the complication of analyzing the permissions and access on the fly, you can still tell people it's complicated. Just because we make it look easy doesn't mean that it isn't complicated. So rest assured, we're not taking away that, that tagline for you. It's still complicated. That's true. It, it is very complicated. I mean, there, there's a lot of data that we're providing. So, some of it, um, as, as we saw kind of in the... Um, in the uh, why does Sam have access to the candidate object scenario, um, you know, with a few clicks, you can kind of immediately drill down and, and find some really interesting um, information that that's immediately actionable. In in some of these other cases, um, like when we're looking at um, uh, like profile consolidation, uh, it we're we're making the the acquisition of the data that you need simpler, but to actually do the work, it's still hard. It's still hard. Um, but hopefully these tools, you know, the, the, the road mapping piece as well as the analysis pieces um, will, will make it um, tractable, right? So, so that, uh, and, and take some of the fear out of the process. Uh, are all three portions of permissions currently available to Elements customers? Yes, they are. 